health care for every American, not just a few, but for each and every one. And she's got a plan to get us out of Iraq because she knows our presence there makes us weaker, not stronger. I've been privileged to know uh, Hillary for about 20 years, and I can tell you, she's one of us. I think you would all agree that that's the kind of fighting leadership that you'd expect from someone here in South Bend, the home of the fighting Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate so much their strong support for my campaign. And I want to thank the uh, Silverhawk staff that has worked so hard to make today possible. And it is such an honor for me to be introduced by your former congressman, John Bradamus. I think Evan Bayh, as usual, just struck exactly the right tone and chose the right word. A statesman. That is exactly what John Bradamus has been and continues to be today. His eloquence, his common decency, his love of humanity and service has continued to motivate him to work tirelessly to try to make whatever contributions he can in education and in international relations and diplomacy and so much as that uh, our young men and women who wear the uniform of our country are facing and we reached a conclusion that uh, we have been pursuing ever since that it is in America's best interest and we believe also in Iraq's best interest that we bring our troops home as quickly as possible. in this crowd is uh, Speaker Pat Bauer, and I thank him for his support. I was thinking that uh, we were uh, at Mishawaka, some of you might have been there in the high school, known as the cave. Today we're in the cove. I hope we're in the groove. <laughs> Gathering support as we travel across Indiana, because this is a momentous election. And Evan is right, it's been 40 years since the people of Indiana have had the chance to help pick a president. And remember how memorable and historical that was 40 years ago. The campaign in Indiana in 1968 is the stuff of legend. Books are being written about it. Because the people of Indiana took the measure of those who were running, thought hard about the future they wanted, and made a decision. Well, now it is your turn, this generation's turn, 40 years later, and I need your help. I need your help to make it very clear that we're going to change We have a great grassroots campaign going, lots of Hoosiers for Hillary, and I am grateful to each and every one of you who have already made up your minds to support me. That's right. Yes. I want to thank you and commend you for your good judgment. Yeah. Day one. From day one. And I hope to be able to make a convincing case to those of you who are still trying to decide between two historic candidacies. Just as 40 years ago our country was at a turning point, we are today. And it is an honor to be running to become the Democratic nominee for the presidency as the first woman running with Barack Obama as the first African American. That is a great tribute to the Democratic Party and to our country. And no matter what happens, that will always be a signal accomplishment because we will now be able to look at every little single boy and girl in America and say to the girls and say to the African American children, yes, you too can grow up to be the president. Turn this economy around so right. it starts working for middle class and hard working families across the daunting challenges we face as a nation, we are up to it. We are Americans. 
Right. You know, we are the people who keep moving toward a better future. Break down the barriers and obstacles to human progress. Create, innovate, imagine, and then pass on those blessings and accomplishments to our children and our grandchildren. Expecting them to continue that forward movement of progress. We are at risk of breaking that chain of progress. We stand at a point where there is nothing guaranteed that will make sure that we can see the progress continue. In order to do that, we need a vigorous debate in this election about what direction we should be heading and what the various solutions are that we would offer to the people of our country. I've been very specific across Indiana and America to talk about solutions because my campaign is about solutions, not speeches. It is about working to make the changes that we know we must have. If, if change were so simple, if it could just be wished into existence, Evan and I would be the happiest people you could find. Because we work every day against some pretty tough odds to try to make a difference. And we know how hard it is. Politics is the process job out of South Bend, out of Indiana to a foreign country. Yeah. And how unfair is it? that a Wall Street money manager making $50 million a year would pay a lower percentage of his income in taxes than a teacher or a nurse or a truck driver right here in South Bend makes less than $50,000. And we need a 21st century trade policy because what we had in the 20th century no longer works in the 21st century. I have said that we will renegotiate now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, this is one of the big differences in this campaign. I voted against it. My opponent voted for it. Uh -oh. Because I don't believe we ought to be subsidizing fossil fuels, subsidizing the oil companies that already make billions of dollars of profit. So we're going to put that money to work with clean renewable energy for not only fueling our vehicles, but also producing our electricity. Now, I know we're not going to do any of this until the two oil men leave the White House, but as soon as they do, yeah. we will be yeah. We're also going to create jobs by putting our building trade and construction workers back to work. We'll have a Build America program. In addition to the 5 million jobs that I predict we can make through clean energy, we can put at least 3 million people to work repairing and building roads and bridges and tunnels and water systems and mass transit and yes, AmeriCorps. And so we're going to do that by issuing bonds like we did during World War II. You know, during World War II, I bet some of you may remember, people bought bonds that then fueled our war industry that helped us win the Second World War. I think a lot of Americans would buy bonds to help build America again and put millions of Americans to work. And we will, once again, invest in health research relationships. We have to make it clear that the United States must be the leader of the 21st century, but you cannot be a leader if no one is following. Yeah. And in, we cannot tackle any of the tough problems we face, like global terrorism or global warming or global epidemics, unless we have friends and partners who work with us. And it is so important that we have a president who respects other countries, who reaches out a hand of cooperation and partnership whenever and wherever possible. Sometimes people ask me after I say something like that, they say, well, I, mean, I don't care whether people like us. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. In order to solve our problems and meet our threats and dangers, people have to want to work with us.